Hello everybody, my name is Raul Garcia and uh, I'm the licensed mental health counselor for Hope Counseling Services in Okaloosa County, Santa Rosa and Escambia County. And I'm gonna be talking to you about domestic violence and its effects on children. Um, one of the things that I wanna talk about uh, that is very important that we understand is that violence is not about losing control, but rather about gaining control over a person or a situation. Domestic violence occurs when someone decides to use physical, sexual, emotional, or verbal abuse to get their way. Domestic violence is used to make someone do something, stop them from doing something, or to punish them. You're always going to hear people say that they made a mistake in either hitting their child or hitting their wife. I want to be clear, violence is always intentional. It has nothing to do with getting drunk or being high. It is a choice. It is never a mistake. We're going to talk about how children are drawn into the abuse and its effects due to domestic violence. Uh, we're going to start off from the womb through one year of age. The ways of being drawn into the abuse is that a uh, baby can be born prematurely. They see it, they hear it, they're awakened by it, uh, they're ripped from their mother's arms, um, they have their toys broken, they're hit while in their mother's arms, and they've been thrown. I've had certain cases where those behaviors actually took place and um, pretty repulsive that uh, someone would do that. Um, the effects of the abuse, of course, uh, physical injury, at times death, uh, fright, they're traumatized by it, uh, sleep disturbances, eating disturbances, uh, colicky or sickly, they're insecure due to being cared for by a traumatized mom, and not being responsive or cuddly, which um, whenever you see that in a child behaving like that, you always have to wonder what's going on. From two to three years of age, <clears throat> they see it, they hear it, and this is where they try to stop uh, the abuse or the altercation. Uh, several years ago, um, I had a client uh, that was uh, in the domestic violence program with me who was arguing with his wife, and their three-year-old got between them, and the mother picked up the child and threw it 10 feet across the room onto the couch. Um, these things happen and uh, there's no emotional discipline when it comes to wanting to control someone else. So they're gonna act out whichever way they, they deem necessary. Um, they become abused themselves. They're used as a physical weapon against the victim. They're interrogated by the abuser about the victim's activities. I'm gonna talk about that uh, a little more detail. Uh, let me give you examples of that. Uh, let's say your child is four years old and the child is, uh, you guys are separated, and you pick up your four-year-old child and you use reverse psychology to uh, get information like, hey, I hear mommy has a friend, his name is Danny, and then the four-year-old tells you, Danny, his name is Robert. So now you've already identified who mommy is, pro is possibly uh, dating. And then you will start asking, well, how is he with you? And next thing you know, you know if they hold hands, you know if they kiss in front of the child, you know how, what's going on, how they treat your son or daughter, and you're using your child to obtain information. In my opinion, that is as low as you can go to use your child uh, to spy for you, um, but this happens all the time. Um, also, they're being held hostage by the abuser. You're supposed to have your child, and the individual says, no, you're not gonna have uh, your child, I'm not, and it's done in front of the child, and the child is torn by what's going on, and the child is affected obviously emotionally they start crying uh, nothing good for the children of course the effects of the abuse they start acting out violently uh, they have trouble with other kids delayed toiling uh, toileting eating problems disorders insecurity and fear the ones that I'm really concerned about would be the depression and the withdrawal when you see a two or three year old isolate themselves where they don't want to interact with other people uh, they sit on the couch like an angel. You know already what a two and a three year old is supposed to do. They're supposed to be tearing the house up, climbing over furniture, being active and mischievous. So when you see something like that, that's a red flag if you go to a home and you see the three year old sit in a corner and not make eye contact, not want to talk. Body language where they're down and out, those are all red flags. Something's going on there. It's safe to, that's one thing that it's safe to assume that something's going on that is affecting that child that way. 
uh, from 5 to 12 years of age. Ways of being drawn into it, they see and hear it, and they feel that they have to defend one parent from the other. That's a real tough situation for a son or daughter to be in because they care about their parents, and here they are having to deal with guilt about going against the other. Uh, just not a good place to be. They intervene physically, um, <clears throat> and a lot of times they get smacked in the process. They call the police, they run to the neighbors, they're used as a spy against mom. We talked about that earlier. Uh, sometimes they're forced to participate in the attack on mom. They're physically or sexually abused to control mom. Um, I haven't had um, the sexually abused to control mom in 11 years I've done that, but obviously we know it goes on. It probably has gone on, they just haven't shared that. And they're restricted from contact with friends or family members. They're isolated. The effects of the abuse, fear and insecurity, uh, low self-esteem, withdrawal, depression as we talked away, running away, early drug and alcohol use, they gravitate to undesirables, uh, they self-medicate, they start getting involved in this to get acceptance, it goes on and on. So obviously school, is, school will be affected. Uh, what happens sometimes with children that, are, that come from abusive homes, they become super overachievers. They volunteer for every activity there is in school to get home as late as possible. Bedwetting, sexual activity, sexual abuse, um, they become caretakers of the adults. If mom's getting beat up and mom is hurt, the son or daughter is going to be taking care of mom's wounds and making sure she eats and taking on such responsibility at such a young age. And of course, embarrassed by one's family. Um, let's go to Jimmy's house and Jimmy's like, no, 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 we can't. Jimmy doesn't want anybody to see what all the ugliness that goes on at home. Teenage years, boys and girls. This is extremely important because it really um, sets the tone and understanding um, a lot of what's going on in the relationships. Um, ways of being drawn into the abuse, they try to kill the abuser or they end up killing them. They try to physically hurt or injure the abuser. They try to stop the abuse. They hit the parents or the brothers or sisters who are there. They themselves become physically abused. They're used as a spy. At this age, they're used as a confidant. They're coerced, they're coached by the abuser to be abusive to mom. They, you know, that uh, parent alienation is what I call it, where they, where they, um, you know, your mom doesn't love you. Look, your mom hasn't been here for you. You know, they just make up whatever story they can uh, to get them to uh, believe them. The effects of the abuse, as we said earlier, school problems, social problems. Um, even having difficulty in interacting with their peers. Sexual activity, obviously, uh, sexual abuse, shame and embarrassment, truancy, super achiever in school, I talked about that earlier. Tendency to get into serious relationships too early to escape home. Depression, suicide, when they feel that nothing's gonna get any better. Alcohol and drug use, and confusion about gender roles, and we'll talk about that in more detail. Um, if I see my dad being abusive to my mother, uh, dad's a male, mom's a female, I'm growing up, I'm thinking that that's how I'm supposed to be. The confusion would be is, what's good about me being that way? Um, we'll talk about that in more detail, something to think about. Effects of abuse specific to boys. This is what men, this is what boys learn as they're developing. They learn that men are violent or that violence is acceptable behavior. They get the violence as acceptable behavior because mom, for whatever reason, the first time she got hit did not pack and leave. So if she stays around at that age, they're gonna think that that's how it's supposed to be. Um, they learn to disrespect women because the man is the one with the, with the power. They use violence in their own personal relationships because they assume that that's what works. That's what dad did, that's what grandpa did. That is what I'm going to do. They have confusion or insecurity about uh, being a man. And that's really, really tough because if that, uh, if that male feels that it's wrong and then this is what they've seen, that, that confusion is there about what is my role as a man supposed to be. And they either attack their parents or siblings. 
Effects of abuse specific to girls. This was really hard for me to, um, to really accept, but it's factual that that effect uh, would, would, would have women believing that learning that male violence is normal or acceptable. If they're around it and they see that everybody does that, they think that that's how men are and uh, no one should ever accept any behavior like that because it's never uh, your fault if you're, if you're being victimized. It's always a choice. They learn that it's normal not to be respected. That's where you get, uh, you know, your names, um, you know, bitch, uh, slut, uh, the names that uh, women are called by their uh, intimate partners. Uh, it's something like, well, you know, my name is Brenda, but I'm okay with that. They're embarrassed about being a female. What's great about being a female if I'm always going to be abused and this is what I can look forward to getting? Um, becoming pregnant and promiscuity. Learning that male violence is normal or acceptable. That's, I mean, to be raised in that environment that you think that it's normal, already your self-esteem is in the toilet, your self-respect is already in the toilet, your sense of self has already been affected and you haven't even had an opportunity to even grow and develop. So you get that at 13, 14, 15, 17 years of age and that's never addressed. Now you're 27 years old and people wonder, well, why do you keep getting into these relationships? This is how you've been uh, basically uh, set up to believe how things are. So we have to be very compassionate and understanding and never think for a minute that it's because they like it or because um, they can't do any better. When their sense of self has been removed, we need to work really, really hard and diligently in building them up so that they're confident and educate them on what the signs are so that they don't ever let this happen again. Other effects of domestic violence on children. Uh, until five years of age, physical complaints, sleep disturbances, excessive separation anxiety, uh, clinging and anxious, uh, failure to thrive. That's not good if you see that on a child uh, five years of age or younger. Uh, until 12 years of age, they behave in ways that reduce tension. Um, they attempt to control the violence. Um, they're having issues of being abandoned, fear of abandonment, fear of being hurt, or of someone, or of wanting to kill someone, uh, fear of their own and others' angers, anger, um, eating disturbances, and of course, insecure and distrustful of their environment. Now remember, this is home. No one should feel that way in their home. Uh, the most dangerous place for a woman in America is in her home, and that's very, very sad and very telling of our society. Obviously, when a woman gives her mind, body, and soul to her soulmate, that should be obviously the safest place, and that security has been compromised. So um, we really need to be compassionate and understanding of, of the victims in this, and the children, of course. Um, girls will have stomach complaints. Um, they seek their mother, they seek approval by being mother's little helper. They want to be there for everything. And they have a low frustration level or infinite patience. Boys, they act out, of course. Tantrums, a lot of bullying. If they've been hit at home, they're usually uh, directed at a, a sibling or they do it in school. Um, low frustration level. Um, and we'll talk about that. They do not develop uh, coping skills, uh, a vocabulary to express how they feel. We'll get into more detail on that in a little bit. 13 years of age, alcohol and drug abuse, suicidal thoughts and actions, running away, homicidal thoughts and actions, early pregnancy and marriage, and of course, last but not least, criminal activities. There is a logical connection between a child's experiencing a violent home life and his or her behavior in school. The behaviors may include physical aggression and resolving conflicts with peers, academic underachievement, difficulties in frustration and concentration, and truancy. As with the role reversal effect, the child does not feel worthy or adequate in the parent's eyes and may feel responsible for the violent outbursts. I don't believe that this is addressed enough. I believe that if you have children um, between the ages of 8 and uh, 15, 16 years of age, they should definitely be in counseling as often as possible 
and um, that should be one of the first things that's done. This child should not feel uh, inadequate or not worthy um, and feel responsible for what's going on. I feel that if that's not addressed at an early age, um, it's going to contribute to further problems down the road. I mean, this is really, I mean, guilt will, will do some uh, head game uh, stuff on child. Weaker or unhealthy interpersonal skills, this is a direct result of that. It will be, I don't know why it says it may, it will be difficult for these victims to form any healthy or intimate relationships as adults. Uh, they will have difficulties in communicating feelings and resolving conflicts. They never learned how to do that. They have unrealistic expectations of other people. They feel the person they're with is supposed to resolve all their issues. As a result of the victimization in the years uh, where you develop healthy development of trust, nurturing, autonomy will be undeveloped. Physical and or sexual injury, the child may be directly abused either physically or sexually or both as a result of the parents' abusive behaviors. Again, in my experiences, maybe one or two that involve sex that they disclosed. Distorted problem solving skill development, uh, guilt, the previous one I ordered and this one, um, let me go back to it to make sure I'm telling you correctly. Weak or unhealthy interpersonal skills, guilt, and distorted problem solving skill development are the three that I most focus on. Children develop methods of dealing with everyday problems in the formative years by observing the interaction and skills of parents or guardians. So look at it as when you're born you're a blank tape and that, it, that tells it all. Since violence and abuse are learned behaviors, the child will most likely continue the cycle as an adult, lacking appropriate problem-solving skills. Um, I don't believe that 100% that you are a product of what you see. Um, I believe at the age of two, when mom tells you the stove is hot and you touch it anyway, once you feel that pain in your fingers, unless you like pain, you're never going to put your, your hand on, on a hot stove again. So we know growing up from experiencing seeing mom being assaulted by dad, when you hide under the bed because you're scared, uh, when you cover your ears so you don't hear the screaming, um, we already determined that that age that that's inappropriate because it caused this pain. So I'm not 100% sold that um, because I saw my daddy do it, um, that's why um, I do it to my wife. When I have people tell me that in group, I challenge them right away on them sharing what it is that they felt when that was happening. And at that point in time, um, you'd be surprised at what they disclose. They, they realize that that's um, a choice and they're doing it because they feel powerless, inadequate, insecure, threatened, or afraid. Those are the main reasons why they do that. Children from violent homes are the innocent and forgotten victims of domestic violence. They've done nothing to cause the abuse. They had no choice in the actions of their family members. They did not choose to be born or reared in these violent homes. And many times the children are left to handle their experience alone. They're faced with a wide range of situations that include physical, sexual, mental abuse. Um, in many, many cases, if the woman is a victim of verbal abuse, the children are told, I didn't want you, you know, you're worthless, you're not going to amount to nothing, get out, you make me sick. Uh, I've had clients disclose that they, they heard that from their parents. Uh, mama's a victim, mama takes it out, dad takes it out, uh, the child's getting the double whammy and, and, I mean, no place to turn. Have both social behavior and emotional problems as well. They become very outwardly aggressive toward peers, siblings, and adults. And many, unfortunately, take the pain of the violent experience inward and suffer depression. Children who live in violent homes may not always be directly involved, but they're affected in other ways. They suffer from witnessing or even hearing the abuse. They're focused on what to do to keep the violence from occurring or on how to survive it. There are many pieces of the puzzle concerning the situation of children in violent homes. But what is not a puzzle is the reality of what happens to them physically, mentally, and at times sexually. The list of negative possibilities include addiction to alcohol or other drugs, running away from home, involvement in gangs, 
involvement in prostitution, school truancy, violence on the streets, violence at school, and the very predictable creation of new generations of violent families. The cycle needs to be stopped. Children living with domestic violence, I'm pretty sure it's more than 10 million, um, but we'll go with this. 10 million children will be exposed to domestic violence every year. The childhood of children living in violent homes are filled with many negative memories instead of the happy ones all children deserve. Deserve, that's very important. The safety of children in homes of domestic violence is always at risk. Short-term effects may be hidden or may not be recognized while children are still living in the homes with the violence occurring. Many children from violent homes grow up to abuse others and many will become victims. Raising our children in a violent world. We all want the best for our children, however many things may interfere with the way children grow, learn, and behave. Some are obvious, such as the death of a loved one. Others are less clear, such as growing up with violence at the home or in the community. Although we think that children are not aware of violence, they usually see and hear far more than we believe they do. I heard a loud noise and thought it was a monster, but it wasn't. It was my daddy. He makes loud monster noises. It is helpful to listen carefully to children's worries and let them know that adults are doing everything possible to keep them safe. I had a therapist that worked with me uh, several years ago uh, who dealt with children and she did art therapy. And um, the pictures that she showed me of how children painted their fathers was amazing. Um, one picture I'll never forget, it's three little kids, they're stick people of course, and the mother's holding their hand and they take about three inches of the page and then the other ten inches is a big face with horrible eyes and a big mouth with sharp teeth. So that's uh, what that child uh, saw in the home. Mom and the brothers and sisters holding hands and dad as being, uh, you know, the big one in the house and, and just, you know, drawn in such a way that just tells you what he thinks of his uh, dad. Um, after what happened in my neighborhood, I don't go outside anymore. I'm too scared. Children often communicate difficult feelings with their actions rather than words. A three-year-old boy loves to play with animals at his preschool. Teachers report that the story he plays over and over again is big animals assaulting big animals. This is what you may see if a child is having trouble. There are some of the problems that may show up at home, school, or another familiar setting when a child sees or hears violence. These same problems can also come up because of other things. If a child you know has several of these problems, witnessing violence may be one of the causes. Sleeping problems, nightmares, fears, fear of falling asleep, headaches, stomach aches, aches and pains, increased aggressive behavior and angry feelings, very high activity level, constant worry about possible danger, hypervigilance, loss of skills learned earlier, toilet training, naming colors, math facts, etc. Withdrawing from friends and families, not showing feelings about anything, emotional numbing, worrying about the safety of loved ones, having trouble concentrating, repetitive play about violent events. Children's responses to traumatic events. This below are symptoms that are commonly seen in children who experience or witness traumatic events. Remember these symptoms may be normal responses to abnormal events. It is helpful to listen carefully to children's worries and to reassure children that we, as adults, are doing everything possible to keep them safe. Please note that many of these symptoms will decrease and disappear over several months. Nightmares, increased watchfulness. Regression to younger behaviors, such as bedwetting. Difficulty separating from caregivers. Cleanliness, worries about the safety of loved ones. Changes in behavior, either more active or aggressive behavior, or increased passivity, shyness, preoccupation. Distress at any reminder of the frightening event. For example, playing shooting games. Talking over and over about the event. Chronic worry that it will happen again. Recurrent memories of the event. New fears. Headaches, stomach aches, etc. More easily startled. 
Principles of support for children who witness violence. This is important. Healing begins with relationships. Help children know what to expect at school. Give children permission to tell their stories. Give parents help and support. Foster children's self-esteem. Don't try it alone. Teach alternatives to violence. Model nurturing and in our interactions with children. We're talking about principles of support for children who witness violence. How about a child who is a victim of violence by their father from the age of eight till 12, and the father threatened to kill her mother if she said anything. And then at the age of 13, the daughter tells the mother what the father's been doing, and the mother slaps the daughter two or three times, calls her names, and tells her that she's lying. I had this woman as a client at 24 years of age who turned to prostitution and crack use and all types of behaviors because that was her way of, of uh, uh, dealing with, with that abandonment by her mother. Um, you know, it's just horror stories out there on, on what happens when people are not there to protect children. Remember, children feel betrayed and if they're betrayed by everybody around them you don't trust anybody. That's not a good place to be, obviously. Uh, intervention strategies. Remember, children are not adults. Use reassurance and calm when talking to a child. Give the child the permission to tell their story. Remind the children that they had nothing to do with the violence. In no way, shape, or form was it their fault. Give parents and caretakers specific help. That's our job, to send the referrals and get family services involved immediately in, in providing that. Work with parents to create a stable, safe environment for children and with parents who do not want to comply, get them out of the picture so the children has a chance at life. When to, when to seek outside help. You should consider seeking professional help in the following situations. The child is vulnerable because of another recent loss, other changes, or upsetting events in the child's life or family. The child was related to or, or a close friend of the victim. When parents are highly upset and less able to be emotionally attuned to their children's needs. A child is physically hurting him or herself or others. A child's parent has been the victim of violence. A child's problem has gone on for three or four months with no change. The child shows five or more of the behaviors listed below. Where you may see if a child is having trouble or children's responses to traumatic events. We're going to finish there and I'm going to talk to you a little bit uh, more on that. What children learn from healthy relationships, it is generally accepted that children are affected from the negative behaviors and actions of the adults in their lives. Most children will imitate the behaviors they see regardless of what is said to them to the contrary. With no bad intentions, we may have modeled unhealthy relationships for our children. We owe our children too much to give them less than what, they make, than what will make their lives happy and productive following the behaviors that can benefit them in positive ways. Showing your partner affection appropriately. Providing examples of good moral and emotional support. Uh, let me share this story with you. Um, I was doing a domestic violence group and one of the suggestions that I made uh, to everybody in the group is that when they got home uh, to sit at the dinner table with their wife and their children and to apologize for the family uh, for being abusive, for being ugly, and, um, and commit to a safety plan of timeouts, leaving at all costs, prevent any more uh, confrontations. So after I said that, the guys in group thought it was funny uh, and ridiculous. Well, the following week, I had one guy who came in who shared with me in the group that he did that. He did that with his four-year-old daughter, his six-year-old son, and his wife. They sat at the table. Uh, he said he was emotional. He was feeling very guilty. He apologized to his wife and to the children, made it clear that cursing, throwing things, getting in people's faces was unacceptable behavior and that all they had to do was the sign of the T for time out. And that's, that was applicable to the four-year-old, the six-year-old, the mother, and to himself so that everybody understands. Well, he got emotional in expressing to the group that him and his wife got into an argument in the kitchen and the four-year-old daughter came running from where she was at with her eyes watery, pulling on his pants, screaming, time out, daddy, time out, daddy. And at that moment, 
they looked at one another and they picked her up and they hugged and kissed her and they said it was, you know, really emotional. They all cried. Um, I don't know if this guy has continued to be abusive. He did complete the program, but that was a telling point. The following week, as I said, when he shared that, there wasn't a person in the room who was laughing then. So we can have a positive influence and we can help families get it together. But when you don't have a father wanting to do the things that he needs to do to ensure a safe environment, we need to do everything in our power for the children to not continue being exposed to that because too much damage is going to be done. Um, having and involving them in effective communication, um, resolving conflicts in a peaceful, nonviolent manner, having healthy win-win closure to disagreements, showing genuine concern for the loved ones, giving praise and showing appreciation when deserved, listening with interest like you care, being respectful, being fair, showing gratitude, being responsible and accountable for your actions, being forgiving when appropriate, treating yourself with respect, and being loving to the special people in your life.